Hallelujah. Thank you again for being here this morning. Man, I just, uh, the Spirit of God in the place this morning is just so powerful. And I anticipate God doing some incredible things as we get near, uh, as we get into the Word and, and get to the end. I just, I have a sense in my spirit that God is going to do something in somebody's lives uh, uh, as, we, as we talk about the name of Jesus. As you know, I've been in the middle of a ser- I've been in a series, Encounter Jesus, and I've been preaching that for several weeks now. And uh, last week was officially the last message in that. That whole series was about a series about who Jesus is and what He's done and the difference that He makes. And uh, we'll preach that series about Jesus saves, Jesus sets apart, Jesus feels, Jesus heals, uh, Jesus reigns. This morning is a plus one message. What I mean by that is. It, is, uh, it was not originally part of my plan. But as we began to refresh in our minds who Jesus is, what he's done, and the difference that it makes, the, through, through that entire preparation period, it just began to well up in me. What does, what does Now knowing who Jesus is and what he's done and the difference he makes, what does that mean for Jesus' name in our lives? And I want to preach this uh, message to you this morning. I'm gonna, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read three scriptures Three passages about the name of Jesus from three different perspectives. I'm going to comment on those. And then I want to dig a little deeper with three simple questions about the name of Jesus. Simple questions about the name of Jesus, including one way not to pray in the name of Jesus. And we'll get to that in a a few moments. And then we'll we'll apply it to our life. So, So turn with me to Matthew, the first chapter, the 21st verse. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When, Jesus woke up, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife, he, uh, but he did not consummate the marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Now turn with me to Acts the third chapter. In Acts the third chapter, that is when Jesus was born and his name was given. In Acts the third chapter, we see where the, act, the name of Jesus is employed. Uh, by employed, I don't mean used as in using something, but that is the, the name of Jesus put into practice. Math, uh, Acts, the third chapter, verse 6 and 8. Then Peter said that it, uh, the occasion is they are going to the temple to worship, and a man is there begging. And Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. And then a final scripture from Philippians chapter 2. This is talking about the place of the name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 2. Therefore God exalted him, that is Jesus. God exalted him to the highest place. And gave him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Lord, I thank you that for the next few moments as I stand in your pulpit, that an anointing will come to preach about your name in this moment. Lord, nothing of eternal value will be done except the Holy Spirit do it. And I pray that by your anointing and by your word and by your spirit, you'll speak into our lives today. Let the name of Jesus resonate in our hearts and lives and let it go right now, Lord. There's some individuals that don't know you or aren't serving you. There's some individuals that are in deep, dark places. There's some individuals, Lord, that know you and serve you, but they have some tough places in their life. There's some individuals, Lord, that have been praying and seeking you and believing you, Lord. I pray the name of Jesus would go to all of those places as we preach this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Juliet said, Shakespeare wrote, and Juliet said in that play, What is in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell just as sweet. What she was trying to convey and what he was trying to convey um, was that names are irrelevant. What we call things is irrelevant. 
And she was trying to say, the only thing that's keeping me and Romeo apart is his name. So what's in a name? A name is irrelevant. And I would say to you that for the most part, that is true. For example, if I call my computer a wrench, and I call my wrench a computer, they would work just the same, right? In fact, many times my computer works like a wrench. <laughs> and sometimes I want to take a wrench to my computer. Come on, anybody. <laughs> So, for the most part, that is true. However, I will tell you this. There is something different about the name of Jesus. It is a name that is above every name. There's something special. So Jesus' name is absolutely relevant. It may be irrelevant what you call your dog or what you call um, uh, your coworkers or what you call... Careful now about that whole dog thing. <laughs> It may be irrelevant, the name they put on your car, it may be all, but I'm telling you, it is absolutely relevant that the, the name of Jesus is absolutely relevant, and it is absolutely relevant the role that it plays in our lives. And I want to talk with you about that just for a few moments. I want to make three observations about the scriptures that we just read uh, because these help set the framework by which we come to the name of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 1, where Jesus was named and born, I want you to pay close attention and recognize this, that the name of Jesus, watch this, was given by an angel who had a message from God and that his name would be Jesus. You, you understand, don't you, this morning, that the name of Jesus wasn't picked out of a hat. It wasn't looked up on the Internet out of 500 names that you could possibly name a child. Um, uh, <laughs> we were with Danielle and Josiah uh, and, and Caden and Casey Lynn this, this past week, and, and um, Geraldine said, uh, Danielle, have you all even thought about a name? She's pregnant again, as, most, as all of you know. Have you even thought about a name? She said, we, I don't even want to go there. I don't even want to go there. <laughs> But I'm telling you this morning that the name of Jesus, God went there. Hello. God went there and he called him the name of Jesus. And the reason he said his name will be Jesus because he will save his people from his sins. And from that point on forward, the name of Jesus, you understand, don't you, that in that period, the name of Jesus was used. It was a very common name in that time. But from that time forward, it changed what the name of Jesus meant because he will save his people from his sins. In fact, from that time forward, not as many people would be, uh, not as many boys would be named the name Jesus. How would you like then for your mama to have named you Jesus? <laughs> right? The name of Jesus. Jesus. God gave him that name. And Acts 4, 12 tells us there is by no other name by which men may be saved. And so that's the foundation. That's part of the foundation into which we come at the name. The second passage we read is about what happens when the name of Jesus is employed and walked out and Peter and John are going into the temple and a man is laying there begging. He is a lame man and he has been begging and, and he's asking for silver and gold or alms to be given. And, and uh, Peter says, I, I, don't have, I, don't have any, I don't have any silver. I don't any, have any gold. Anybody can relate? <laughs> he said, but what I do have, you need more than you need silver. What I do have, you need more than you need gold. What I do have, you need more than you need alms. And what I do have, I can give you because I have plenty of it. It says, in the name of Jesus, walk. And he reached down and he, and he took him by the hand. And the man leaped up and began to praise at God and, and rushed into the temple with him, praising God. And Scripture actually tells us, read it there in Acts chapter 4, or Acts chapter 3. It says that everybody in the temple recognized this man who was now leaping and shouting and praising God as the man for who for years they had passed every day they went to the to the temple they had passed this lame crippled man but at the name of Jesus in fact later when the disciples had to give account for what had happened they they were they were causing such a uh, isn't it something that healing at the temple caused such a ruckus that somebody got arrested hello and when they were given an explanation for it, um, they said, what, what is it that you, and, and, and Peter says, listen, I just want to make no mistake about it. If you're, if you're inquiring how the man was healed, let me tell you that it is at the name of Jesus that this man was made whole. We're told Matthew um, 8, 16, Mark 16, over and over and over that at his name, demons tremble, and at his name, sicknesses are healed, and at his name, depression and oppression flees at his name, his name. 
Because his name speaks of the power and the presence of God and the reality it brings in our life. Jesus' name brings the power and the presence as a reality in your life. And then the third observation there from the third verse is Philippians chapter 2. And here we see that Jesus' name is a name that is above all names. It is a name that has power over all and is a name that will be confessed by all. In other words, God, according to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22, God has put everything under his feet and subject to his name. There is no other name higher than the name of Jesus. And we're told in Revelation that his name will be praised for eternity to come. So we find that his name, that Jesus, the name of Jesus says that he will be present and saved. The name of Jesus brings the power and the presence of God as a reality in our lives for when we need him. And the name of Jesus is higher and bigger and mightier than anything that you and our face in our life. Can I get an amen this morning? So I don't think anything that I've said so far probably um, is revelation to anyone. It's, it is, we're just setting the foundation. So uh, I, I don't think that's a, that's a revelation. But the, the point is this, the name of Jesus is more than a title. It conveys who he is and what he has done and the difference he makes in our life. The name of Jesus is about, is, is about Jesus himself. The name of Jesus reminds us of all that he has done for us in our life. I can't say the name of Jesus that I don't remember the things that he has done in my life. And the name of Jesus uh, causes me to have trust in him because I know the difference he's made in my life. Anybody remember when you say the name of Jesus, the difference that he's made in your life? Come Come on, church, right? But, that, but I want to dig into that just a little bit deeper with three very basic, simple questions because I think most of what I've said so far is, is uh, oftentimes taken for granted and, at, and in that not necessarily understood. And so I just want to dig with three simple questions. I want to dig a little deeper here about the name of Jesus. First of all, what is Jesus' name? What is Jesus' name? Cruden's commentary, which is an old, old commentary, says there are 198 names and titles for Jesus in the Bible. 198. I'm not going to preach all 198 to you this morning. You can just breathe a sigh of relief for that. But I, but I do want to give you, I do want to give you a flavor, a sense of some of those names, right? Uh, Jesus translated is the word Yeshua. Yeshua means Yahweh saves. It goes back and it says the God that we serve saves. Uh, his name is Christ. That is, he is the Messiah. He is the one that they were looking for that will come and will rescue and save them. He is known as the Son of Man. Why? Because he came and was born man and walked among us. He is named, more known as the Son of God. Why? Because he was God's only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And we leave out verse 17, but I think it's so important today. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. When you hear the name of Jesus, you don't need to be condemned. He came that you might be saved. Amen? the name of Jesus. He is known as Lord. That's one, of the, that's one of the names of Jesus. He is known as Lord. He's not just my Savior. He is my Lord. He is the one that is in charge and in control. He is known as the servant of God. He's known as Logos, the Word, John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And all things that were created were created through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. And in him was light and the uh, life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness cannot overcome. That's Jesus, right? That's Jesus. He's known as Savior. Emmanuel. Wonderful. Counselor, aren't you so glad? I, I am thankful for the saving grace of God, but I'm also thankful that sometimes he is a wonderful counselor that comes along and walks along beside of me. I don't know about you. Well, I do know about you, but most of you won't admit it. I'll admit it, right? I need counseling. <laughs> turn to some. You know you've been trying. You've been wanting to say this to somebody. Just turn to somebody and say, you need counseling. <laughs> Some of you got way too much joy out of that. 
I'll just admit it, right? I'll just, I need counseling. And I'm thankful that I have a wonderful counselor who has been through everything that I've been through. He's seen it all. He's experienced it all. He's been through it all. And he has the answer for it all. Come on, church. That's the counselor that I have in Jesus. His name is Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Say it out loud. Prince of Peace. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is the Almighty God, the living one, and my favorite, He is the Lamb of God. Amen? Revelation 4 says, I saw, He looked into heaven, I saw a Lamb as though He had been slain, but He was standing at the right hand of the Father, and in His hands He held the keys to the kingdom. Oh, man, the Lamb of God. That's who Jesus is. Jesus' name is called in the Bible. Depending on what version, interpretation of the Bible or what version you read, the name of Jesus is found between 900 and 1,300 times in the Bible. You understand the whole book is about Jesus. Amen? That's what the name of Jesus is. And there's many more and more and more names that are there. Those are just a few. So that, what is the name of Jesus? And I encourage you to explore all of the names of Jesus. A second simple question, though, that I don't think we think about much is this. What is in the name of Jesus? And when you say in the name of Jesus, what is in the name of Jesus? J-E-S-U-S. But what, but what is in that name? And, and I, I just, I want you, this, you've got to get this point. If, if anything that I'm saying this morning is going to make any sense to you, you've got to get this point. In the name of Jesus, in all of those names that we speak, in the name of Jesus is the character, the power, the life, and the spirit of Jesus. You understand when you say Jesus, you're not just saying J-E-S-U-S, Jesus. When you say Jesus, it is in his name is his character. It, it is his compassion, his peace, his joy. In the name of Jesus is his power over sickness and death and hell and the grave and depression and oppression. In the name of Jesus is his soul, that is his mind, his will, his emotion that I can tap into in anything that I face. In the name of Jesus is his spirit. That is the spirit of life. You see, when I say the name of Jesus, uh, I don't think the person Jesus, the historical figure, I don't think J-E-S-U-S. -S. I think Jesus, one of love and compassion and power and spirit and life. That's who I think when I say so what is in the name of Jesus is Jesus himself. Jesus' name encompasses who he is, who he is. See, we come to know that in our own lives as well. We get this, but we don't think about it in Jesus. When I say um, there, are, there are names, and I'll just go here. There are names. You know names. You know people when you say their name. You don't think of something good. Right? But there are these other people. You don't think of something good because you have a history with them, and that history with them is not a, not a good thing. And that's a place, by the way, you can speak the name of Jesus over. That's, uh, I'll get to that in a little bit. But, here, but, but, but there are these other people in your life. All, all, all of us have some other people in our life, and when you speak their name, you remember something about their faithfulness. You remember something about their character. You remember something about what they have done in your life. You remember something about who they have been in your life. And so their name comes to embody who they are as a person. But I think sometimes when we say the name of Jesus, we don't think about it in those terms. But when I say the name of Jesus, especially more now after this series that we've talked about, I want to think of who he is and what he's done and the difference that he makes in my life because that's who Jesus is. That's what's in his name, right? I laugh sometimes. It doesn't happen as much as it used to, but it still happens regularly. In fact, it happened last Sunday morning and I, I made a note to myself. I've got it old enough that I'll remember if I write it down. And I made a note to myself to remember to mention this next week though. One of the Bayshore children, I, I, uh, it's either Gabe or George. I don't remember which, but, but back, when they were, back when they were first um, uh, growing up, I, obviously Paul and Brittany were trying to teach them uh, good manners. Uh, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. Praise the Lord for parents that still teach yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. They were trying to teach them Mr. 
and misers and miss and, and all of this sort of stuff. And one Sunday morning, I think it was gay, George came around the corner and he said it. Good morning, Mr. Pastor. <laughs> and from then on, I've been Mr. Pastor to him. <laughs> I don't know what a Mr. Pastor is, but I can tell you this. When he says Mr. Pastor, that name means something to him. When he says, Mr. Pastor, there's somebody that comes to mind, and, and I want that to be somebody good. I want that to be somebody that has made a difference in his life. I want that to be somebody that, that has, that has min, ministered him and touched him and played with him and high-fived him. I want it to mean something. I'm telling you, when I say the name of Jesus, it means something to me because of who he is and what he's done and the difference that he's made in my life. That's what's in his name. Amen? And so the third simple question then is this, what does it mean to employ the name of Jesus? And again, by employ, I mean put the name of Jesus into practice. And here's again another one of those things we don't think about much. When we pray or live or speak in the name of Jesus, here's what it means. To employ the name of Jesus means to stand and live and pray, watch this, in the character, power, life, and spirit of Jesus Christ himself. In other words, you stand in for him. You represent him in that moment. When you are standing, when you are using his name, you are standing there in his character. You are standing there in his power. You are standing there in his faithfulness. You are standing there with his life flowing through you. You are standing there with his spirit living and operating inside of you. And when you stand there, you are backed by his character. You are backed by his power. You are backed by his life. You are backed by his spirit. We see this, by the way, in a story in Acts chapter 16. We see this in the story in Acts chapter 16. Paul and Silas are preaching, remember? They're preaching. And a, woman, a young woman, a young lady who was possessed is walking around behind them everywhere they went and saying, pay attention to these two men. They are the servants of the Most High God. Right? Nothing bad on what, what they were saying, but he understood. Paul was discerning that this, that this, this, uh, this uh, demon in this young girl was drawing, even though what they were saying was not necessarily a, a bad thing, it was that he was drawing attention away from, right, away from what the, the message they were proclaiming to herself and to the demon was calling attention to itself. By the way, demons love attention. This is another message for another time, but demons love attention. And, uh, and they love to hear their own name came, and that's uh, called, and that's what was going on. But Paul, uh, Paul finally got tired of it, and he turned around, and he said, look, and he said this. You can find it in Acts chapter 16, verse 18. In the name of Jesus, come out of her, and we are told, and in that moment, the demon left. You understand what Paul was doing? Paul was standing there in the power, the life, the character, the spirit of Jesus Christ himself. And so when he said, in the name of Jesus, come out of her, the power of God was present. The life of God was present. The character of God was present. The spirit of God was present in that moment. Which brings me to the opposite. I told you I was going to uh, say this. And I just, one, one of the best ways sometimes to learn something is by contrast, right? By contrast. So I want to give you a lesson in contrast. A lesson in how not to pray in the name of Jesus. How not to pray in the name of Jesus. There's another story after Acts chapter 16. There's another story over in Acts chapter 19. Many of you all know the story. I won't read it for the sake of time. But it's the story of the seven sons of Sceva. If you read that story closely, here's what it says. It says that they were, you can find it in Acts chapter 19, 11 through 20. Write it down, but don't go read it right now. Just tune in right here. It says this. It says certain exorcists. That's the way it's actually translated in the English Standard Version. uh, That they they would go around and they would exercise power or authority over demons. In other words, they would call a one demon to get get power over another demon. They were, they were driving out spirits. Here's what, it, here's what it says about them. Watch this. I, I'm quoting now from, from verse 13. They tried to invoke the name of Jesus over these demons, those who were demon-possessed. Do you get it? They tried to invoke the name of Jesus over these de- people that were demon-possessed. Kenner, one of the best New Testament scholars of our, gener- uh, of our generation, says this. According to magical theory, watch this, uh, to coerce a deity or a spirit by, to do their will by invoking its name. That's what they were doing. They were invoking the name of Jesus to get something that they wanted, to get a result that they wanted. Come on now. 
pull your feet up under your chair. You see what they were doing? They were, they were using the name of Jesus to get their will, to get what they wanted. And here's what, and the, and here's what the demon said. The demons then replied and said to them, listen, listen, if you are ever in the situation to have to cast out a demon, and Geraldine and I have been in that situation, what you don't want to hear is, Jesus I know, but who are you? The demon said, Jesus we know, and Paul we've heard of, but who in the world are you, sons of Sceva? And the word says that he, this man jumped on them, beat them naked, and sent them off bleeding and naked. You understand what's going on here? They were using the name of Jesus to get what they wanted. You know what that is? That's nothing more than magic. You understand, don't you, this morning, the name of Jesus is not magic. Come on now. The name of Jesus is not magic. It's not a word that we tag on to the end of something we want, right? Now, listen, you've been all into the message up to this point now. It, 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 if all you're doing is listing off the things that you want and what you want to have happen and what you want to see happen and what you want to get and what you want to be, and you tag the name of Jesus on the end of it, that's nothing more than these men who were practicing magic were doing, and they got the result, right? That the name of Jesus, watch this, embodies the life, the power, the character, the person, or the spirit of Jesus Christ himself. It's not magic, Right? In fact, I'll just say it. I'm already in there. Just dive on in, right? Many people, many, let's just, let, no, that's, let's just say it. Many Christians use the name of Jesus more like the sons of Sceva than like Paul. Hadn't talked to Jesus. Don't know Jesus. Don't care what Jesus says. Don't want to live for Jesus. They don't want to be like Jesus unless they need something. And then they want to use the name of Jesus. Right? Can I just, I'm just going to say it. I knew when I was preparing this message, I thought, I'm, this is going to be so bad. <laughs> don't use the name of Jesus like magic. It don't work that way. It don't work that way, right? The, the name of Jesus embodies the life, the spirit, the character, the power of Jesus Christ himself. It's not magic. It's more powerful than magic, my friend. It is Jesus Christ himself coming to bear in that moment and in that sin. That's what it means when I pray in the name of Jesus is that Jesus shows up, right, to do what? His will, what he desires what he said and promised that he would do. It is not in the name, spelling of the name J-E-S-U-S. -S. It is in the character, the power, and the life, and the spirit of Jesus Christ himself. Amen? You all right this morning? Have you got a Holy Spirit checkup right here? I did. I did. I just, can I just be transparent? I did. As I'm unpacking this sermon, I just began, Lord, make sure that in my life I don't ever do that. I don't want to ever use your name in a way, Lord, that just tries to get my will. I want to use your name in a way that taps in to your life, your power, your character, your spirit, so that you show up in that moment. Amen. So how do we do that? Real quick, I'll give you some practical things. This is not a formula. This is not a formula. I'm going to give you some practical things, some keys to, to the name of Jesus being employed in our life. And one is this. The first, you got to start here is to accept Jesus, right? To accept Jesus. That is to be saved. And I, I believe there's some here today that need to start there or need to restart there. There's some under the sound of my voice that need to start there or need to restart there. And I'll, I'll circle back to that in a moment. But let's start there. But, but also, but not, just to, not just to accept Jesus, but to get to know him, to become familiar with him. Pastor, how do I do that? Read his stories in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read it over and over and over and over. Get to know him. And I, again, I'm just talking about some things that will help incorporate the name of Jesus in your life in a way that is meaningful and powerful. How about this? Become like him. I'm going to be preaching some at some point about, about um, true discipleship. You know what true discipleship is? True discipleship is being an apprentice of Jesus that I might become like Jesus. That's what discipleship is. 
That is, that I, I become familiar with him and I become more like him in order to be like him. How about this one as a way to incorporate Jesus into your life? How about encountering him? That is, walking with him daily in your daily relationship. That's what this whole series has been about. It's been about encountering Jesus. Then, watch this, then you begin to live in Jesus' name. And living in Jesus' name means living for him and not for myself. Uh, that way I don't what? I don't use his name, right? I don't use his name in some magical way to get, my, get what I want. If I'm living my life, as Ephesians tells me, or uh, Colossians tells me, I no longer live for myself, but for the one who gave himself for me. If I live in that way, then I'm apt what? To not tap into what I want or I desire, but instead to tap into uh, to his will and to use his name in in a way that brings about his will. And the last thing is this. You can't miss this. If you're going to incorporate the name of Jesus in your life, you really do have to trust Jesus. Ultimately, ultimately, you have to trust who Jesus is and what he's done and the difference that, he can, that only he can make. Ultimately, you've got you to trust him. Hear me now. Hear me well. Because many times when we hear preaching on the name of Jesus... We miss this point. When I pray in the name of Jesus, what I'm asking is for him to become present in that moment in his character, his power, his life, his spirit, and to do what he wants. Now, I have a real good idea what he wants because he tells me in his word. I, there's a lot of scriptures that tell me what he wants in regards to sickness and healing and depression and oppression and marriage and family and finances and, and many other things in life. But when I'm praying in that moment, you understand what's going on. See, what has to happen in that moment is I have to trust Jesus with the answer to that prayer. The name of Jesus does not get you the name of Jesus does not get you what you want. The name of Jesus gets you what God wants. And when you get what God wants, that's best. Right? That's best. And so you've got to trust. You've got to trust him in that prayer. You've got to trust him in that circumstance. You've got to trust him in your life. It, to truly live in the name of Jesus, to pray in his name, to walk in his name, you've got to trust him. You've got to trust him. So here it is in a sentence. Here's the whole main idea of the whole message this morning. In order to live and pray in the name of Jesus, get to know and trust him. The better you know him and trust him, the more you identify his name with who he is. And then the more you live and pray in his name and see him work. Two real quick stories. Two quick stories. One of them I was a part of and one of them happened to me from two different perspectives about the name of Jesus. Daniel and Casey Lynn were very young. Geraldine and I were, we had the girls with us and we'd gone somewhere. I believe we might even have been on the way to church. And we stopped at Five Points, a store at Five Points. And for some reason I had to walk back out. And as I walked back out, I heard just this horrendous screaming. I mean, it was just, the, it was, it was, traumatic something was going on and I rushed around the corner to see I rushed around the corner to see a van a van uh, uh, and people were crowded in the van and I rushed over there and a young boy there's a family had gotten out of the van and there was a young boy in the van and apparently one of the children who whoever closed the door thought all the kids were out but one of the young boys one of the small kids was getting out of the van and they and they slammed the van shut on his hand. And men, I mean grown men. It's a true story. It's a true story. Grown men were snatching and pulling on the van. It, it, was, it was jammed in there. Could not. And you could see, just from my vantage point, you could see his hand was just crushed in the door. And he's inside screaming. I know this is traumatic, but I want you to hear me. And, uh, he was, his van, hand was crushed inside of the door. And, and, and people were trying to, to yank and pull. And, and, and finally, one of the men just came. He says, I don't know what to do. And I'm standing at the back. And just inside of me, just something inside of me welled up. And I just said, Jesus. And the van door popped open. Had nothing to do with me. You understand what I'm telling you? I want to be real. Had nothing to do with me. But here's the amazing thing. Little boy jumped out of the van. 
Not a thing wrong with his hand. No blood, no scar. The skin was not even torn. You hear what I'm telling you? I'm talking to you about the name of Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus doing what only Jesus can do mm, and trusting him to do it, right? On the other hand, on the other end of the spectrum, brief story about me. Many of you know, I won't go into it. All of the, all of the uh, health issues of 2014, 15, and 16. And there were many times in those times, in those seasons, when I'd be here at this altar during the week by myself or I'd be in my office or I'd be in my car, a lot of the time I was at the house um, just suffering from whatever it was. And in those moments when I'd whisper the name of Jesus, the outward circumstances didn't change and many times the physical circumstances didn't change but the peace and the comfort that comes at the name of Jesus listen to trust him to do what only he can do that happens at the name of Jesus and that's that's what I want to see that's what I want to see when I use the name of Jesus when I employ it in my life I want his name to bring about what he desires to do right because I trust him and live with him encounter him and get to know him and walk with him and ultimately trust him so this week here's what I'm going to do I'm going to I'm going to give you some scriptures in a, in a moment but we're not going to do this to the very end because uh, I don't want you to be distracted with it we got something else to do first with them. we have some handouts that I want to give out uh, I also have a QR code that I'm going to put on the screen. And there's a, there's a scripture for every day of the week. Every day of the week. That talks about the name of Jesus. That I want us to meditate on together. So that we're all thinking and praying over the same scriptures. But I'll give that to you in a moment. Right now. Right now. I feel that there's some in this sanctuary. That you need the name of Jesus spoken over you. Or spoken over your life. Or spoken over somebody in your life. I'm not talking about magic. I'm talking about the person power, character, spirit, life of Jesus Christ spoken over your life this morning. And some of you need to begin where I said a few moments ago, some of you need to begin by giving your life fully to Him. So I want you to close your hand, eyes, and bow your head just for a moment here. And if you're sitting under the sound of my voice, whether you're online or whether you're watching later, or whether you're right here right now, some of you need to give your life to him so that his life, his character, his spirit, his power can operate in your life. And I just want to give you an opportunity to do that. I sense and I feel that this morning. There's some, some that need to start there, some that need to restart there. Maybe you can remember a time when you really knew Jesus but that's not this time that's not where you are now but you this morning you want to make it fresh you want to make it new if that's you would you raise your hand I want to see I want to see your hands I want to know who it is that I'm praying for who it is that I'm praying for if that's you this morning I want you to raise your hand I want this morning yes there's a hand somebody else there's a hand there's two there's three yes just slip it up and slip it back down We'll pray a prayer with you right where you sit <laughs> this morning. If that's you, you need to start or you need to restart. Just got to pause another moment. There's three. Just slip your hand up and let me see it. I just want to know who I'm praying for. Mm, if that's you this morning, start or restart. All right, I want, I want everybody here to pray with me. I, I just don't want any. You understand, don't you, this morning? Romans 9, 10 says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord you shall be saved so by praying this prayer it's, it's not that you're repeating the prayer after me it's that you believe it in your heart and you confess it with your mouth <laughs> and his saving grace will come into your life so I want everybody here to pray this this morning if you're one of those three I want you to believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth along with the rest of us but if you didn't raise your hand but you knew you needed to you still can pray this prayer Lord Jesus, come on, I need you to say it out loud. I, I need, listen, I need you to say it out loud because somebody else beside you may need to say it out loud and may be intimidated to do so. Lord Jesus, 
I thank you that you brought me here this morning. I know I'm not here by accident. And I know I need you. I confess that I've sinned, that I've not lived my life like you would have me. And I ask you to forgive me. I don't want to live that way anymore. I want you and your name to be in control of my life. So I give my life to you. I ask you to take it, Lord. The good and the bad, take it, Lord. For I surrender to you. Come and be my master. Come and be my Lord. Come and be my king. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Lord, as these this morning, as they have believed on you, that you went to the cross, died for them, and they know you are their Savior, and they need a Savior, as they have believed it in their heart and confessed it with their mouth, I pray right now this morning, Lord, that you will begin, Lord, right now, begin to lift the burden of sin. Begin to lift the shame of sin. Begin to lift the embarrassment of sin, God. And begin to wash them clean right now, Lord. Washing them. Let them feel and experience and know, Lord, that you are lifting that burden off of them. That you are making them your own. You are putting your spirit inside of them. Holy Spirit, come and fill them with the life of Jesus Christ this morning. That from this day forward, nothing will ever be the same again. I thank you and I praise you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to want you to stand up because it's going to be easier this way. There's some, there's some, listen, those, those individuals, if you raised your hand, I encourage you to respond to this, but there's many others. You need the name of Jesus spoken over your life this morning. Somebody, there's something you've been praying about, something you've been perplexed about, some issue that's going on in your life, some individual that you've been praying about in your life. Uh, you just, you need this morning what we sang about and what we preached about it, you need the name of Jesus spoken over your life this morning. So I'm going to invite you to come. There's somebody that's facing an absolutely impossible situation, and you don't know how much longer you can take it. I know this. I know this in my spirit this morning. I'm telling you this morning, you need the name of Jesus spoken over you. So as they begin to sing this song, I want you to step out, and we're just going to pray the name. of. We're going to speak the name of Jesus. If you're one of those three that raised your hand, may I encourage you to slip out as well along with the others. Just slip out as well, and let us pray the name of Jesus. So as they begin to sing, come on, step out this morning. We're going to pray the name of Jesus over some individuals in their lives. Come on, step out this morning. Yes. Thank you. Come on. Come on, there are others. Step out this morning. God's going to do something in your life this morning. Come on. Yes. Jesus over you. Yes. There's some others. Come on. In your hurting, in yes. your sorrow, yes. I will ask my God to Yes. Move. Come on. Yes. I speak the name because it's all that I Hallelujah. can do. Yes. Yes. In desperation, yes. I'll seek yes. heaven and I'll pray this for yes. you. I pray for your healing. That circumstances would change. Come on, church. God's doing some things right now. I pray God's that doing some things right now. Come on, worship Him. In Jesus There's some name. others, others of you that need to step out this morning. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes. 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 Come on, let him. Let him move this morning. Let him move this morning. Lord, we speak the name of Jesus. We speak the name of Jesus. Faithful to keep, I speak the name no grave could ever hold. He is greater, he is stronger, he's a God of all. I pray for your healing, that circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside. Jesus' name. 
circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Yes. In Jesus' name. Lord, right now we speak, Lord, over individuals that aren't able to be here this morning. We speak over Jim and Joanne Tishnell. We speak over Woody and Gail. We speak the name of Jesus over Joanne Fluker. We speak the name of Jesus over Lola Parker, God. We speak the name of Jesus, Lord, over many others, Lord. We speak the name of Jesus over them this morning. We pray that in that circumstance and in that situation, you would step mightily into that place, Lord. Step mightily into that place, Lord, this morning. And as, I, as you step into that place, Lord, I thank you that all of who you are, your character, your life, your spirit, Lord, will fill that place, fill that atmosphere, fill that life, Lord. Let them be filled with your compassion and your love and your power and your healing, Lord. Let them be filled with your life in the midst of that, Lord. I thank you and I praise you. We speak the name of Jesus over them this morning. We thank you. <laughs> we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I want you to do something this morning. I want to give you a resource. See me, I think I left the copies on the copier. If you'll grab them. Um, we're putting a QR code up on the screen. Um, and this will give you a digital copy. Will you, you just scan that real quick. You know how to do that? Open your camera, point it at the screen. When the little yellow thing comes up, just tap it. It's going to download a resource for you. It's going to download a resource for you. It is a passage of Scripture for every day of the week this coming week. Mon Sunday, one for today through next Saturday. It's a, so come on, we're going to just leave it up there. Scan it. Open your camera. Somebody around you might not know how to do this. Just open your camera, point it at the screen. A little link will come up. Tap on that link, and it should download. If it doesn't work for you, let us know. Also, uh, if you are technologically challenged, is that what I'm going to say? We have printed copies, so there is salvation, right? We have some printed copies in the back that you can pick up. And here's what I want us all to do. I want us together. I want us together this week each day of the week to read those scriptures and meditate and think, I believe, listen, I'm believing for revival. I'm believing for revival that God's going to do something in our midst and in us and among us and through us. And I believe as we meditate on the name of Jesus together, I believe, I believe it's going to break some things and turn some things loose in the spirit realm. I believe that, church. So if you didn't get it, we're going to leave it on the screen. Uh, maybe somebody can help you with, but, after, but also we have some printed copies so until I see you again, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord work his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Remember, Wednesday night, pumpkin spice and everything nice night. 6.30 to 7.30. God bless you. We love you.